So Ben was one of the characters in Rogue One, which is probably one of my favourite Star Wars films. Um, much better than the majority. Uh, how did you find find work with it? How did you get into it? Because it's Star Wars is a huge <coughs> franchise. The best franchise. So I started a sort of long backstory. I was a um, a Navy pilot, so I flew helicopters in the Royal Navy. And um, uh, towards the end of that, I had my commission basically, I had a 16 year uh, commission. And um, I knew that I was going to be having a career. Um, I'd done acting previously at uh, school and university and was a career. That I was interested in films anyway. Um, my colleague, uh, uh, very talented director and actor called Henry Davis. And we had written some film scripts before, we shot a, uh, a short film, we shot, we wrote our own feature film, which wasn't necessarily very good. Uh, but it was a film school for both of us in a few weeks. So it, it was, we are sort of heading in that direction anyway. And, um, and how I actually got into, into films proper was uh, through another colleague, a friend of mine called um, Andrew Buckley, who was a, a Royal Marine who went into location management. So he was a location manager. And he, he gave me a call. I was in the last year of my time in the Navy. He gave us a call and said um, that he needs some help getting uh, a, an aircraft hangar. Yeah. Um, so we yeah, tried to get a hangar for this film. I didn't know what the film it was. And, um, and then a few weeks later, he phoned up and said, oh, look, you know, you're, you're well connected in the Navy. Maybe you could help us. I need a, a, an aircraft carrier. Yeah, so I need an aircraft carrier. Yeah, So, um, yeah, we uh, sort of set about trying to work out how to get an aircraft carrier. This film. Anyway, the film turned out to be World War Z. Um, and there was a ship that was in Falmouth and Dots, uh, and at the time. And we managed to, uh, well, him as the location manager got a film uh, to, to come down to Falmouth. So Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie and the whole of Hollywood descending on small town family. Yeah, it's not very big, is it? No, it's not very big. Um, and, um, and it was whilst we were on set there, sorry, I ended up doing uh, the advising, aviation advising. Okay. So a lot of the deck scene there's uh, scenes where the helicopters are taken off the land on the, on the deck, and I was came on to the two or three days on that, um, which is great. Uh, but we saw a lot of the the, the people were running around on the, on the ship dressed as US Marines. They really weren't, you know, there was, yeah, yeah student or painter or whatever they did. And, um, and we said, uh, you know, we could, we could help we could get some guys actually done that. And uh, and so between us, we got together some, uh, some mates of Andes and ex Royal Marines to play some roles, you know, some proper roles. And that went really well. A couple of months later, I had a call from an assistant director saying, Have you got a bunch of guys? I've heard you did a great job. We were on this film called Edge of Tomorrow. It's this uh, Tom Cruise movie. Like, Brilliant film. Great. 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 So, yeah, so our first foray into films was well presented. And then um, uh, Edge of Tomorrow. So it's like <laughs> it's a great start to it. Yeah, Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad start. So, yeah. <laughs> We um we ended up building a data space of um of ex military people yeah. to put on films. And uh, and that's how it kind of started really. Uh, we did a number of other film projects and then it came to Rogue One and the assistant director from from Rogue Z, who um was a amazing first AD came to call and said we're involved in this project. And um, can, you know, can help out. So that was Rogue One, and I was on as, as a aviation advisor, so teaching the, um, the cast at the time how to. Uh, you know, no, 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 Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's a lot of. Well, firstly, helicopters—they, they, you know, they also they, they fly in in ways like 
a lot of the spaceships do. It's not like a runway, it's not like a jet where they sort of shoot down the runway and take off. They're, they're lifting up vertically and they, they move in a sort of way that's a bit like a hobby, you know, and yeah, coming to the spot. Uh, so, yeah, I worked with the um, Gareth Edwards helping some coordinates on the scenes. And it was during that time uh, as well that uh, on, on the set, sorry, I was on the set as well. And then you asked for actors who had done um, film work before. And uh, we had some auditions with one of the, um, the associate producers uh, to, to, yeah, to, to yeah, to various flying bits to do with the, um, the prelims when they, when they shoot scenes, they want to see how they're going to look with people in the um, and yeah, it was myself and uh, there was a uh, very good actor called Russell Fallon, who was um, uh, a stuntman. Um, stunt, stunt okay. And uh, he, uh, he plays um, Bruno Sorrell, which is one of the clients as well. And then, um, yeah, we got. Yeah. Oh, you got asked to go in. Also, go, go in as the. Um, yeah, so we kind of. In a roundabout way, he got in, um, yeah, got in the So that was a really long, that was a really long no, response. Oh, I don't worry. No, loads trying to absorb there. Like, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great film, and then Edge of Tomorrow will live by the people. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Live in the world. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, how did you feel putting on the, the guard? Because obviously it's quite famous, especially from the the original play. Yeah. It's very quite synonymous with my panel and Luke Skywalker getting into the fire and, and everything. How how is it when you kind of put it all on and look at yourself in the room for Yeah. It was ama it was amazing. So we, we knew that a few of us knew that we were um, playing the character roles because we'd been separated and, and, and had um, photo sheets and other bits for um, for other materials, you know, like the merchandise and yeah. stuff. That, uh, the toys or the books or the sticker books or training cars or like all those sort of shots and we knew that we were oh, you got that. Yes, I do have training cars. Oh. I'll give you one. I've yes. got one that back. Um, but um, yeah, so we knew that we were going to be involved in yeah. quite a big way, which was clearly very exciting. But it was at um, the Carlington Hangs where they did the garden base. And that was the first day of uh, the, the, the shoot that we were involved in. And um, Go into the area where they have all the costumes, and uh, and one of the one of the extras who's um, in, in, the, uh, in the in the tent as well uh, started crying when he saw the <laughs> saw the kit. It was so so moving when you see. Especially if you've grown up with him, you yeah. think, oh god, this is this is the proper stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I and mean, the detail, I mean, the, the, the films. Um, or film makers and everyone involved in films that care so much about the um, the authenticity of the uh, the, um, the, the films, the props, the costumes. They care about the legacy of the films. Yes. Um, so to a T, everyone really cares about the films. Even though even some audience members might think you know that um, you know, suits taking over Star Wars. It's not. That's not the case. Three, top to bottom, everyone really genuinely yeah, cares, isn't it? Yeah. But they're trying to pay service. Yeah, so they've yeah. gone before, and people always judge it on the original. It's very difficult. It, it is. Kind of it it is. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, but to go, yeah. Sorry, but yeah, no, 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 absolutely. No. Um, yeah, when you first put them kids on, you can't quite see yourself. You can only see other the other. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I saw some of the other. Yeah, there's a mirror, so you can stand in front of them and have a look. <laughs> there's people popping up, just look up blue. Yeah, quick selfie. Yeah, yeah. No, no selfies. You're not allowed. No, no, no selfies on set. No, no, no cameras on. I'm sure something. No, no, no. Maybe a try, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so when we first got in the gear, we went through, so they took us through to where the, the, the scenes were going to be made. Um, in the garden base that they built, and yeah, I remember just thinking this is crazy. Firstly, because when I first started flying for real, um, the idea that got me and got me excited about flying was as a child seeing 
you know, I was running out to their X wings and they're stuck. And just like, wow, the line's incredible. And then almost like full circle, thinking, I'm here in my flying, my X wing flying here that sort of inspired me to become a pilot yeah. anyway. And I'm not, kind of come around. It's all coming through. Yeah. It's like this. Um, but uh, yeah, and then we came out into the hangar, and the thing is built like it's uh, the base. Yeah. From the from the floor to two stories up where the, the camera's never going to even see, the guys have built the sets, you know, still decorated in the same detail, very well as it is. Just in case of fires? Just because, yeah, they just do it right. And um, and it just felt like you were there. Yeah, it was, yeah incredible. Because life-size X-Wings um, in there. And uh, yeah, it was... Uh, <laughs> like one of those, 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 one what what have you been doing since Rogue One then? Um, well, after Rogue One, so solo, um, again, I was asked to go uh, as a uh, aviation pilot. Yeah, you were saying that earlier on. Um, yeah, so that was um, a case of uh, going Holden and Jones, who played um, Harmon in Chile, uh, comfortable with the controls of the, the, um, the also, made sure that the supervisor who you know clearly has a job of trying to make the, the flying scenes as yeah. realistic as possible, tie in with the stories as well as possible. And um, yeah, you do, there's a lot of sort of turning and fro between seeing what they're trying to achieve with flying and then what is possible, and then how the actors might interpret yeah. what they're doing to serve the, you know, the story in the film. So how did you find being on solo to being on Rogue One? Um, it was, yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, Alden really, he really, really cared about the, the character hugely. Yeah. Um, and he just wanted to get everything right all the time. So he was, a, he was really fastidious and wanted to know everything about the cockpit and controls and how to start it. And he didn't want to be flicking random switches and buttons no. and levers. Because you know someone out there will end up looking at it. Well, yeah, that's, no, that's not right. Yeah, yeah, you're totally right. Um, but also that um, in a performance sense, that if you're if you just if you're reading a line and just randomly flipping buttons and switches, it, it doesn't. There's no um, there's no sense or purpose to yeah. what you're doing. And, um, and so he wanted if they were in a flight configuration where they're about yeah. to disappear off into you know. Hyperspace, Hyperspace. Or whatever, yeah. yeah, that you would be. What would I? What would I be doing? Now clearly, I'm a Navy helicopter pilot. I'm not a uh, no <laughs> a spaceship pilot. But you still have there still the same things as you're approaching an aircraft carrier or leaving an aircraft carrier. You might be sh shutting off certain sensors that are going to be really powerful long range yeah. sensors, so that when you're on deck, you're not on a private deck crew. Um, and in the same way, you can you can put that to you know, yeah, into yeah. space. So yeah. as it's like leaving a the, uh, an air base or it's arriving at a or a planet or you know it's the same principles applying and it and it um yeah it gave them you know reason behind their their actions in the cockpit so yeah, and yeah very good shooting <laughs> yeah very good shooting yeah. yeah and i know the film's going to be divisive but for sure i know um you know i thought it was a lot of um a lot of fun you know i'll be biased because i you was work on it, it yeah um but seeing how much the the actors especially care and and but both sets of directors look good and, and Miller and Lord when they started out and then Ron Howard afterwards um, you know they know it's a, uh, it's a tough you know it's a tough film it's hard to please everyone yeah. um, and especially with such an iconic character and I personally think they did a you know a, a, a great job in the film um, and I know like I said I know they're mixed thoughts on it but um it was great being on the film yeah great being in the cockpit of falcon but <laughs> how many people can say that they sat in the cockpit of the lady falcon with, yeah with Han and with Chewie. yeah and, and ron howard down there as well being amazing um so yeah there was how was it what's the difference between lord and miller and and how yeah, good and, point. and changing the the style because obviously a completely different way in which they, they work yeah i mean they, they they both brought a lot, and I, the the end result has both the, all their stamps on it. You know, so it, it wasn't as if um, yes, there are reshoots. There are, there, there are reshoots on lots of films. It, it, there's lots of planned reshoots of films that, that people don't realise 
that you've actually set aside time because you know that there are pickup shots you'll have to do, you'll have to shoot a few different endings because of the way that complicated stories might play out. You know, you won't know until the audience, yeah. um, like a test screening and that sort of thing. So, you know, they're, they're all the work and they're always do reshoots on that on that film anyway. Um, so yeah, it took a, a different tack. Uh, originally, it was um, a lot sort of uh, freer in a sense in the yeah. way that, um, that they were shooting it. But yeah, they just the directors have different styles, um, and so it was. You know, there's no right or wrong one. It's just a different style. But definitely, there there was their marks still on the film. Yeah. But um, but Ron Howard's a you know, very seasoned, you know, pro. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a long way from having it. It's a long way from having it. But what what have you got planned for for the next sort of year, two years? What what's on the horizon for you in yeah. terms of work? Um. Yeah. So we produced um. Or, or, I was an executive producer on a, on a short film because we wanted to go into um, production as well. We obviously I, I had some experience of that. And um, yeah, this short film called Sylvia was meant to go to film festivals and, and it did uh, over the last year or so. Um, we managed to become Oscar qualified and um, BAFTA long listed as well as winning some very big prestigious awards around the world so it's a great start um, and yeah there's a, um, a, a great director who um, and his wife is the producer uh, yeah, Richard, Richard Prendergast and they uh, they live not too far from, um, from, from here oh, okay. and so they're uh, up in the uh, Norfolk way and uh, yeah we're, we're developing a feature film so yeah, along right. the same sort of hill, or is it going to be? No, it's a it's a it's a thriller. It's a psychological thriller. Okay. Um, with sort of horror elements in it. So if you think maybe back to um, long before your time, <laughs> Jacob's I don't know. Jacob's Ladder. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Which is a you know, um, which is a head. Real head message. Head yeah. Matter. Yeah. Can use other languages. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 we use other languages. Language. Language. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's it's a, that it's that kind of feel when you're talking about like a psychological like thriller, a psychological stroke, horror. horror. Yeah, it's um, it's along those lines. Um, are you going to have a, a starring role in it? Are you, uh, gonna, are you going to stay behind the camera? It depends. Yeah, if, I, if I'm um, if production is quite a full on, um, uh, yeah, full on role. So the idea is to, if we, uh, if we get to fully develop and produce that, that would be amazing. Um, and yeah, I might have to stay on the other side of the camera. Um, but uh, yeah, I've just had a, a, a callback for a, a Netflix series, which I can't mention at the moment, which uh, on the acting side, which is, um, yeah, things crossed. You know, no, How did that go? Because obviously Netflix is like a huge behemoth now. Yeah. How? How does that sort of process work for them? Is it same for film studios? Is it? Um, what in terms of uh, getting on? Yeah, to kind of get on the radar and stuff. And oh, yeah, yeah, that's just, yeah, that's uh, through. I've, I've got an agent, so yeah, you get a call from your agent saying, "Yeah, we're going to be doing this." Yeah, and um, yeah, it's kind of like this certain show that's on Netflix. That's is it already an established show? Uh, it's had one season. This is its second right, season. Okay. So, um, yeah, they're, 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 they're Get Google out and check to see which one's going to be. Yeah, which one's about a season? Yeah. So uh, yeah, but don't have the part, but it's th it's those sorts of uh, jobs. So yeah. yeah, hopefully if I get a chance to do that, that would be very exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, we're continuing on with the casting side as well, working on a couple of. Um, couple of projects. Again, okay. it's really hard. Again, Some of these big projects you can't, can't say anything. Yeah, you can't say. And the, the, the difficulty is that you're often working on these films from quite early on. And the process is one where you, you know, on a development stage where you're casting for something either for, you know either in the acting side or um, casting background, specialist background, which yeah. is what we do. Uh, the film doesn't then get shot for another year and then doesn't get released for another year. So you have two years of saying, I can't really talk about yeah, it. Yeah, just, just in case. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
mad. So how do you find people with things like that? Like that? Because you obviously want to do one, you might do several in a year. How how do you find being able to sort of not tell anybody that? That's yeah, what you're doing? it's it's hard. I mean, uh, yeah, the thing is, social media now is um, it's a blessing and a curse. It's it's great to be able to promote yeah. um, whatever product it is you have. With films, it's really important because you get instant sort of feedback and opinion from people. But um, in terms of privacy type thing, it's just impossible, you know. For, again, it's like you're saying, you know, selfie, someone takes a selfie. In days gone by, they would have like had the little windy one you could yeah. and in three months' time, then get it developed. Yeah. You know, now, it's the moment they take it, it's online. It's been uploaded to iCloud, it's on there, instant. Yeah, it's on Facebook or whatever it is. Yeah, um, yeah so it's, uh, it's hard to keep things under wraps. But, okay. yeah, yeah. Lastly, then, what films are you really looking forward to seeing this year from a, from a, a viewer perspective, from an audience perspective? Um, that's a good point. Um, I tell you, Gina was a. Uh, as a dad of young kids, I'd have to see films anyway. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, where am I behind? I'm just trying to think what box I'm in. But the thing is, me and my wife are always, we're always about a year and a half behind everyone yeah. else. Everyone watches these boxes. Yeah, yeah. But they, they say this, you know, like our friends, it's the most amazing thing ever, you know, this new box set thing. And I'm like, I'm, I'm still finishing Breaking Bad, man. I'm like, yeah, I'm like a long way behind. Uh, fair enough. Well, yeah. I really appreciate the time. You know, so I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And I'm hoping everyone has had a real good sort of insight into what it's like to work with the House of Mouse. Yeah. You, you don't want to say anything that will upset the House of Mouse. No, no. They, they, like they, said, they, they are unknown fans of you know, Star Wars. But they right and have a strong opinion on these amazing, amazing Especially they've got a love and a passion. Yeah, them. absolutely. So you can, you can kind of blame people for having such strong opinions. But I, I will say that the, the people that work on, on these films, that you know, they they genuinely are trying their hardest yeah. to make the best possible piece they can. Um, but, um, yeah, that's a mouse. That's a mouse. Yeah, I don't know where, I, I see someone put that on Facebook, or it's, I think it might be on uh, Den of Geek or something. And, yeah. And, they always call it a house of man. So, but no, thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Take care.